Welcome back. In this video, we're going to look at how to factor expressions that look like this. But what makes this expression different from the ones we've considered in previous videos? Well, unlike with our previous trinomials, this one's x squared coefficient is not one and common factoring can't be used to simplify it. This expression can indeed be factored though. Let's take a look at how. Given that this trinomial has an x squared term, an x term, and a constant term, like the other trinomials we factored, we might expect that its factored form will again consist of two binomial factors, and we would be correct. As usual, each factor will have an x term, which when multiplied account for the x squared in our original expression. However, the original trinomial's x squared term is not 1x squared, but rather 8x squared. No problem, switching x to 8x in one of our factors would give us the desired result of 8x squared. But we could also use 2x in one factor and 4x in the other. We'll soon see why 2x and 4x is the way to go here. Similarly, the constant terms in our factors should multiply to the original trinomial's constant, 15. 1 and 15 multiply to 15, but so do 3 and 5. Which option do we choose? It turns out that we want 3 and 5. Let's see why. We know that in expanding the factored expression here, 2x times 4x gives us the 8x squared term of the trinomial, and 3 times 5 gives us the trinomial's constant term of 15. But what about the trinomial's 22x term? How does that relate to the factored expression? It actually comes from two multiplications, 2x times 5, which is 10x, and 3 times 4x, which is 12x. Combine these like terms and we get our 22x. So in summary, if we want to factor 8x squared plus 22x plus 15, the coefficients of x in the two factors here must multiply to 8. The constant terms in the two factors must multiply to 15. And what we'll informally call the cross products of these values must add to 22. Let's try to apply this thinking to another example. Let's factor 12x squared plus 64x plus 45. As always, we should try to common factor first. But since the greatest common factor of 12, 64, and 45 is 1, common factoring isn't fruitful. So we start by finding two numbers that multiply to 12, perhaps 3 and 4, and two numbers that multiply to 45, perhaps 5 and 9. We then check the cross products to see if they total 64. 3 times 9 is 27, and 4 times 5 is 20. Since 27 and 20 do not add to 64, we need to use different values. Perhaps switching the positions of our 5 and 9 will work. Again, the cross multiplications do not give a sum of 64. We could try several other pairs of numbers that multiply to 45, but we quickly see that none of them give us the 64 we want. Let's try using 2 and 6 instead of 3 and 4 for the numbers that multiply to 12. If we use this pair with our 9 and 5, the cross products give us the desired sum of 64. Now, it may seem like a lot of trial and error is necessary to find the right values here, but you'll see that as you gain more experience with this type of factoring, much less guessing and checking will be necessary. Now that we've found the right combination of numbers, we can write our factors. One factor is 2x plus 9, the other is 6x plus 5, and our trinomial is now fully factored. Let's finish with one more example and factor 3x squared minus 11x minus 4. As usual, we attempt to common factor the expression, but again we have a greatest common factor of 1, so we move on, looking for two numbers that multiply to 3 and two numbers that multiply to negative 4. The only whole numbers that multiply to 3 are 3 and 1. If two numbers multiply to negative 4, we know that 1 must be positive and the other negative. I like to ignore this fact at first and just find a couple numbers that multiply to 4, say 2 and 2. The cross products here are 6 and 2. Unfortunately, even if one of these was negative, they wouldn't add to the negative 11 coefficient of x that we need. Let's try using 1 and 4 instead of 2 and 2. If we place the 1 on top here and the 4 below, we get cross products of 12 and 1. And if the 12 was negative, these products would add to negative 11. 
we also know that either the 1 or the 4 must be negative in order to multiply to the negative 4, so we make the 4 negative and get the negative 12 we want. We now have our two factors, 3x plus 1 and 1x minus 4, which gives us the fully factored expression. For access to hundreds of interactive practice exercises similar to the examples in this video, click the link in the video's description.